Hey, welcome to the channel, everybody. I'm Amateur Radio Call Sign, W9FFF, ham radio dude, if you will. And I'm very excited today to get to test a LifePo 4 battery for multiple reasons. I've tested batteries in the past on handy talkie radios, but today I'm actually getting to test LifePo 4 thanks to Red Odo. Red Odo is formerly known as Zoom, and they're a battery company that makes and manufactures LifePo 4 batteries. This one's going to be a 100 amp hour battery today. We're going to talk a little bit about it. We're going to run some tests. And yes, uh, we're going to test out this battery over the course of the next year. So I've already told Alexa to set an alarm for a year and we'll check back in on this. All right, let's get started. And thanks for checking out the channel. Let's start off by going to Red Odo's website. And I'm going to give you a fair warning. If you go to the website, mute your speakers. There is a musical loop playing on the main page that you can't disable. Maybe they could fix that because nobody really wants to hear it anyway. But here we are on the Red Odo website. And the first thing that you notice is younger, bolder, stronger, which is the Zooms motto. Again, Red Odo was formerly known as Zooms, but you also notice they talk about grade A cells. I think it's important for us to take a step back real quick and talk about what are grade A cells versus grade B cells. And in order to do that, let's go to another website. A grade A cell is the name of the battery's high quality standard grade A LifePo 4 battery cells are within the range of technical parameters in all aspects of the parameters. The appearance is intact, no damage and no swelling and no abnormal battery can be called a grade A. YouTuber Will Prowse already tore this battery apart and you can check out his findings, see the insides of the battery and much more on his video, which I'll link below. But now we are on the Red Odo website. As you can see for $299.88, it's advertised as a LifePo 4 100 amp hour 12 volt battery. The operating voltage of this battery is 12.8 volts with a maximum continuous load power of 1280 watts and a maximum continuous charging discharge current of 100 amps. The size of this is 6.82 inches by 13 inches by 8.46 inches, and this uses M8 style bolts, a total of 16 millimeters in length. The bolts can be replaced with M8 bolts of other lengths if actually needed. It is also nice that you can get chargers on the Red Odo website. Some of these uh, other companies selling LifePo 4 batteries, you're kind of left in the dark on what you're supposed to purchase as far as chargers go. But if we take a look here, they do offer a 10 or a 20 amp battery charger. Now I have the 20 amp battery charger and it is $100. However, it did charge my 100 amp hour battery in just a little bit over five hours. On the 13th of September, the battery was shipped from Red Odo directly. I received it on the 19th of September. I like to operate battery power in remote locations with amateur radio, and that gives me the opportunity to have a low noise floor on the radio frequency spectrum. However, I could see where this would be very useful for the future where I guess I should probably get a charge controller, a solar panel. We'll hook this all up because this could be very beneficial for the house, especially when we undoubtedly lose power over the winter. The Red Odo battery could be connected with up to four identical batteries in either series or parallel. If you do it in series, you'll have 48 volts at 100 amp hour battery system. Or if you do it in parallel, you'll have a 12 volt system with 400 amp hours. And I think we should also probably mention that since these are Zooms batteries, you could intermingle the Zooms and the Red Odo, but uh, don't go with like another brand. And of course we got the battery when I unboxed everything, but we also got a user manual. And I just want to take a second to mention that the user manual is very concise or clearly written. It's 23 pages and uh, you could tell that the quality is there. So they took time and effort to write down this manual, which you could appreciate. Anyway, if we take a look inside, we'll notice all these things like how to connect batteries in parallel or series. And they have nice little drawn out diagrams as well. Red Odo is based out of China and they do say that they have 24 hour response times for support tickets. I did reach out to their support a couple of times and I'll tell you, I did receive responses in a timely fashion, but more importantly, I could actually understand and comprehend the emails that were being sent back and forth to me. And they did have a lot of care and compassion when it comes to responding to those emails. Now comes the fun part, right? Testing. And I typically can test with a continual load tester. Hold on. All right. I, all right. I typically test with this continual load tester here. And the thing about it is it does have a nice little display and readout on the screen, but it doesn't do any kind of cool computer analysis. So I went and picked up the West Mountain Radio CBA5. 
Let me tell you how I set the parameters. We know that 150 watts is the max of the CBA5. We also know that we have a battery that's 12.8 volts. If you take 150 watts divided by 12.8, you get a number which is 11.71. That's the max amps that we want to be testing this battery at. And if we go over that number, guess what happens? Smoke, sparks, and possibly even fire. Uh, it happened with my first continual load tester, all my fault, but we live and we learn and I got the opportunity to purchase the CBA5. I'm not using an amplifier, but let me just explain what an amplifier would do. If you had this device that does 150 watts max and you needed more, you could get an amplifier externally for this and it would increase uh, the maximum from 150 to 500 watts or to 1000 watts and so on. But again, in this situation, I don't think it was necessary. In the future, it might be if I get bigger batteries. A typical LifePool 4 battery might instantly lose a little bit of its voltage and then flatten out for the remainder of the test until it's depleted and then it'll drop dramatically. You'll notice at right around the 10 mark that there was a spike. And I just want to mention that spike was because my computer went into sleep mode. And when I woke the computer up, it turned on the CBA5 again. And once it turned on the CBA5, that was the spike you see. It all leveled out and it shouldn't have affected anything. At just over two hours, we were at 17.02 amp hours. <sighs> well, it's 3.48 in the morning and uh, I just woke up like normal, but boy, this battery won't die. <laughs> I'll see you in a little bit. Well, it's uh, 4.30 in the morning now. I'm feeling a little bit more awake and taking a look here. It looks like we're on our final descent with this battery. And what do I mean by that? Well, we've hit 100 amp hours, which is great. And as you can see, we're starting to rapidly decline in energy. The test did complete, and I'll show you those results here in just a second, but I did want to make a couple of more notes. Number one, I set the cutoff for the test to 10 amp hours on the battery or on the CBA5. And the reason I did that is if I completely depleted the battery or went past 10 amp hours, I was concerned that maybe I would put this battery into a state where it wouldn't wake back up or potentially damage the cells too. So with that 10 amp hours, it shut off. And uh, the other thing I did want to mention really quick is according to the research online, there's no low temp charge or discharge cutoff, which may be able to be added in line at a later date, but keep that in mind. Now to the results. Wow, 105.896 amp hours out of 100 amp hour battery. And that was done over the period of what would be 13, point, uh, 13 and a quarter hour, roughly. Uh, really, you can't complain too much about that. But a couple other notes here. You'll see a red line that's about three quarters of the way through the screen and it runs vertical. That's the 80% mark. And so you're looking to see if this battery performed within 80% of its advertised rating, which it far exceeded that. It, it actually exceeded its actual rating. And uh, the other thing that we want to make a note of here is the 10. There's a line, a green line that you might not be able to see that goes across the 10. And that's just what we marked as the actual cutoff line for uh, the amperage. If it gets below 10, shut it off. All right. I want to thank Red Odo again for sending me this battery for testing and evaluation purposes. It's more than just a free battery, if you will, which a lot of people say. And I want to explain that before I give a final conclusion and opinion. One of the things that used to bother me was I would get comments constantly that says I'm too long and drawn out or I need to get to the point in my videos. And I do my videos in a way where I believe that anybody can learn. For me, getting a product and being able to go hands on with it is the best form of knowledge. And I try my best to bring that experience to the end user or the viewer, if you will. And if I have helped you in any way through these videos, no matter how long and drawn out they are, would you let me know in the comments below? But now let's talk about this conclusion here real quick and wrap it up. I do recognize that LifePo 4 needs longevity for testing properly, and I just don't have a year to wait for now, but we will come back to this in a year and we'll check the cells to see if they maintain their integrity. Uh, if anything changes before that, I'll definitely be the first to jump on here and say, hey, this battery failed or whatever the case may be, because batteries do do interesting things, LifePo 4s in particular, you know, sometimes even when you get them, it takes a few charges for the cells to even out, if you will. And uh, there could be some issues there. So again, I'll check back with you if any of that changes. 
I do want to say that, yeah, the shipping time was decent coming from overseas. Uh, the support that I've already received was clear and I understood it. There wasn't a problem in communication. I'm happy with the battery. But more importantly, I think what would be great for Red Odo to do would start being or starting to make rather smaller batteries for things like portable operations and amateur radio. You know, get a get a 10 amp hour battery in there or a 16 amp hour battery and start kind of competing with those. Although there might be a reason it's not being done, like maybe it's not financially feasible. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. Would you guys like to see a smaller Red Odo battery? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for checking out the video. I'm Amateur Radio Call Sign W9FFF. I hope you have a good one. Goodbye.